Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. Hey, I can look at myself naked. Are you stoned or something? They tried stoning me, my dear. It did not work. He likes to create his own sauce. Well, did you sleep with a man who also slept with mom and grandma Catherine? What? You slept with dad? All right. Which one of you sardines called this meat? Whatever, major loser. Let the party begin! Hello, and welcome to Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. The shock twist at the end of a very dark movie. <laughs> that's Chad Eckwitz. And that's Simone LaRue, who even shocked me with her, her quick and, <laughs> and, and sharp words. That was excellent. Thank you. I mean, you. wow, nicely done. And I, I only have one question for you at this stage of the mm. day. Who done it? Who, who did done it? <laughs> who did done it? <laughs> I love this, like, when we know what we're doing for the week. And I mean, I guess that, like, the title of the episode would give it mm. away. But I do like to believe that there are some of our listeners who sit there and they're like, okay, what fucking movies are you guys doing this week? Because you keep going <laughs> and doing these, like, really specific things. And then you never tell us what episodes you're doing. Mm. So, you know what? I think this is the perfect week to actually keep it a, um, <laughs> as vague as possible because of the topic. Am I right? We'll, uh, yeah, we'll give you the synopsis and you can guess the movie. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. At the end of it, only at the end of the synopsis can we say the name of the yeah. movie. Given Actually, that's the, not a bad idea. Yeah, so Let's we'll call this episode what we call this episode so that mm -hmm. the people who listen will have to guess. This, is, this has become very meta. Look at us go. <laughs> <laughs> mysteries and mysteries and mysteries. <laughs> It's what we do best. And this is why this is our lowest listened to episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, Simone, straight into it. What are you drinking this week? Um, well, for the moment, I'm drinking a coffee because I'm a little mm -hmm. tired. But then I'm drinking a beer. Oh, I will not shit. mention. Oh, it matches my shirt. Oh, it does. Look at that. Yeah. For all of our YouTube oh. listeners, it's a lovely yeah, orangey, goldeny color. It's lovely. I will not mention who I got it from or how because I don't want anyone to get in trouble because it's illegal <laughs> but uh I got one and I'm very excited it is a golden lager that comes oh, in at 5.2 percent oh nice okay very cool I mean mm -hmm. you have officially become a bootlegger now you are essentially Gatsby I want you to I have so many friends who just suddenly got way into bootlegging um and for once, I'm very excited to be friends with so many dodgy people. That is so cool. Like, I am very envious of your life because of that. <laughs> Full 1920s. It's brilliant. It's absolutely fantastic. Like, what a life to live. Like, are you going to, do you have, have you invested in lots of, like, flap addresses? I am desperate to, because I feel like I could really pull one off. Oh, yeah. You've got, like, the mm. figure for mm -hmm. it. Easily. Thank you. Easily. Yeah. 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 So. Boyish. <laughs> What? No, no. It's okay. okay, that is, that is okay. not what I meant. I, you know, without being creepy about it, you have a very nice figure, and it's Thank not you, at Chad. all boyish. <laughs> like, no, don't be like that. You're, I hate that. It's no, you have a I'm lovely. I'm just figure. joking. I like, I like my body. Okay. <laughs> Gets me so mad. <laughs> When any you're, like woman a, you're, like a, you're like a mom or something. Like, no, you're beautiful. Don't you dare. I'd be a great mom. Um, <laughs> you would be a great mom. So I am also drinking a beer, but I decided to, you know, be a, a 70 year old man and go for a Pilsner top. Um, so that's for, for our uneducated swine listeners out there. That is a Pilsner with a little bit of lemonade on top. Uh, so it's not Ooh. quite as sort of committed as a shandy to have half and half, mm. but it's just like, gives it a little bit of sweetness. Just that is well. a lovely summer beverage. It is. And it has been actually surprisingly warm today in the UK. Mm. So that's what I'm, I'm feeling. It. it got up to 36 degrees on Friday. Holy shit. Yeah, That's when you just pack it in and stay home. Like you can't it, venture well, out into the world. No, no, no. And I mean, <laughs> now you cannot deny global warming like without a question surely <laughs> well we've done uh, it for this long yeah so so my pilsner uh comes in at 4.5 percent so i'm just under you this week mm -mm -mm. i am the winner you are the winner so if you okay, want to well, let me give... open up this beer do it crack it oh God, crack, please crack don't, that cold one please for the boys. don't fizz <gasps> mm. It 
fizzed up. <laughs> That's some great ASMR for our for our listeners. <gasps> mm -mm. You've just You're increased welcome, our YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you've you've just increased our YouTube listens by at least like twelve subscribers. <laughs> There's the thumbnail. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just do like a special cut of just you sipping mm. that sound for like an hour. We'll just have it like rego um, reiterate over and over again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We'll call that. We'll call that fresh, fresh tomatoes nights with a Z. <laughs> it's still foaming. Look at this. Wow, that is a very carbonated beer. Like. <laughs> I wish it would stop. Now it is getting a little sexual. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I, I wish you hadn't said that because I, I was about to say, I'm really enjoying this <laughs> aspect. And then you said that and it's like, yeah. well, I can't now do that can. now. Now it's weird. <laughs> My God. <laughs> this is the content that we come for. <laughs> I can only apologize to our audio listeners. I fucking love it. If you it. head on over to YouTube, this is thrilling stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, this is this is the episode where they realize, right, okay, it, this is this is rock bottom. This is the mm. the epitome of, of quarantine. You can only go up from here. God. Oh, that's a good <laughs> beer though. Excellent. And um I found someone who I can get uh, wine from, so that's going to be delivered Tuesday or Wednesday. We're buying in bulk um, because it's cheaper. Wow. So I'm going to have 10 liters of wine in the house. Good Lord. Getting it at a good price, so. That's, well, I mean, you know, you've got to, you've got when you're on the underground market, you've got to do what you yeah. got to do. You, you're a hustler now. Uh, um, quite the rebel you'll find. Yes, you're you're gonna start all these like cool like you 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 can become very rich from this. To be fair, you could you from could, bootlegging. Yeah, from bootlegging. Might yeah, well. but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any like you know me. I'll get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just I'm just supporting local industry. <laughs> that's a good way. That's a good way to phrase it. Just supporting this the local. This is still foaming, by the way. <laughs> Is it mostly just carbon? Like, is it like, are we just, are we just I'm having... genuinely concerned. I don't understand what's happening. I think you got duped. Mm-mm. I mean, it tastes delicious. Maybe it just like wasn't in the fridge for long enough or it got shaken up some at some point. Who knows? Maybe while Rudy was running from the cops after he picked it up. <laughs> Hey, that's you. You know what? If you're gonna if you're gonna die by the sword, you gotta live by the sword, and that's that's what he's doing. Mm. <laughs> okay, let me tell you about my movie. I will. I'm very excited to learn about your movie. Okay, Nick and Audrey Spitz, played by Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston, are your average couple who are in a bit of a rut. Nick is lying to Audrey about being a detective when he in reality has not passed the detective's exam yet. And Audrey is a hairdresser obsessed with murder mystery novels. Um, one night after Audrey confronts Nick about how the love in their marriage has been lost and their marriage has no adventure anymore, he spontaneously decides to book them a trip to Europe like he's been promising for 15 years. While they're on the plane, Audrey meets Charles Cavendish, played by Luke Evans. He is a Viscount who is extraordinarily wealthy and on his way to celebrate the engagement of his grandfather, Malcolm Quince, played by Terence Stamp. No, grandfather? Uncle? Um, uncle. I think, I, think, I think it was grandfather, wasn't it? I think it's his uncle, actually. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, uh, his... No. Okay. He is on the way to celebrate the engagement of his uncle, Malcolm Quince, played by Terence Stamp. It's a little awkward because his bride-to-be is Susie Nakamura, played by Shirley Katsuna, who used to be engaged to Charles and got stolen away by Malcolm, who is ancient. <laughs> he says that he's going for the drama, and he says to Audrey, hey, why don't you and your husband come along? Because it'll make everybody furious. <laughs> Obviously, they want to be on the super cool yacht, surrounded by rich people drama, rather than their tour bus, so off they go. 
When they're on the boat, they're introduced to the whole rest of the cast of characters, including, including Grace Ballard, played by Gemma Arterton, who is a famous actress and distant relative slash friend, excuse me, of Malcolm's family. They meet Toby Quince, who is Malcolm's son, and ra played by David Williams, and rather a bit of a disappointment to Malcolm. <laughs> They meet the Maharaja, whose money is sort of tied up with the Quince's fortune, played by Adil Akhtar. They meet Sergei, the Russian bodyguard of uh, Colonel Lenga. Uh, Sergei is played by Olaf Dari Olafsson. With, there's a lot of um, accents over Lots the of... letters in his name, so I, <laughs> I can only apologize if I get it wrong. Colonel Lenga, Colonel. It's Colonel, right? Yeah, yeah, Colonel. Yeah. Colonel Alenga is played by John Carney. Whoop, whoop. Woo! Uh, Colonel Alenga is a general from Namibia who once saved Malcolm Quince's life and has been his lifelong friend. And Sergei is his Russian bodyguard. They also meet Juan Carlos Rivera, played by Luis Gerardo Mendez. He is a Formula One driver who is currently driving for Malcolm's team. His dad also drove for Malcolm, we find out later, and lost his legs in a terrible accident that's probably Malcolm's fault. <laughs> um, once he has everybody together, Malcolm announces that, in fact, none of them are getting any of his money when he dies. He's writing them all out of his will because he hates all of them. They're a bunch of leeches, and he's signing everything over to his fiance, Susie Nakamura. Just as he's about to sign the will, the lights turn off. When they turn on again, Malcolm lies dead with a dagger in his chest. <gasps> Who did it? Who Naturally, did it? Nick, who's pretending to be a detective, and Audrey, who's obsessed with murder mystery, and neither of them are supposed to be there, decide that they're going to solve this case. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans ensue. They meet Inspector Delacroix, an Interpol agent played by Danny Boone, who naturally suspects them first. <laughs> As you would. Um, Throughout the shenanigans, uh, a couple of people die. Toby apparently commits suicide and takes the blame for killing his dad, which obviously, too much of a red herring. Uh, Colonel Alenga is shot, and the, so is Sergei. Um, Grace Ballard and the Maharaja have a very funny not-sex scene. Uh, <laughs> Charles Cavendish gets killed. Susie gets killed. They finally have a showdown where they reveal who the killer is, and it turns out that it's Grace Ballard, the long-lost daughter of Malcolm Quince, who wanted to eliminate her other siblings so that she, according to French inheritance law, could get all of his money. Just when they think they're done and they've saved the day, they realize that, hey, Juan Carlos Rivera actually does understand English, and Grace Ballard must have had an accomplice. What follows is a chase through the streets of, I think, Lake Como. Mm, it looks um, like that. That results in them finally chasing him down, bringing down the bad guy, solving the mystery, saving their marriage. The end. Woo! What is, uh, what is your cliffhanger? Oh, it's, there are so many. Oh, um, my clip hanger is going to be this one. And it's the one where, um, like, you know, Malcolm's there addressing everyone. And he's like, oh, you're not getting a thing. And she's like, she turns to her husband and she's like, you couldn't get this on the bus. And he's like, no, you could not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing about this movie, though. Like, like it's an Adam Sandler, but you kind of like I kind of low key really actually enjoyed it. Like I, I thought this movie was so much fun. Yeah, like like it was just like kind of sexy and really provocative yeah. and mysterious. And then you've got like this really nice commentary from Adam Sandler and 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 um, um Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston, thank you. As as if like they were watching the movie themselves. Mm. And that kind of just like added to it. It was just really fun. Yeah, I really like that like you know, it's this mystery filled with like rich and famous people and then this average ass couple <laughs> from New York <laughs> is there like, "Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, yeah. it has to be him, but why?" <laughs> oh, the shrimp is incredible. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> which to be fair i guess would be like like if we went on like a trip like that that would be us we would just be like snacking and then just be like this is this is so incredible this is crazy I was also thinking about it Well, I was joking with Rudy about it because mm. if I was like, oh yeah, this rich guy wants us to go on his yacht with him, he'd be like, no, like we're going to get kidnapped and sold into slavery, <laughs> like blah, blah, blah. But He's if I wrong. said, hey, he wants us to go watch the Grand Prix with him in Monaco, <laughs> Rudy would beat me to that boat. <laughs> <laughs> he would not care. He'd be like, it's worth a shot. So it would be, it's, it's, it's sort of how you phrased it, I guess. Like that mm. would be... That would be how, how you got him involved. Rudy would risk his and my life to see the Grand Prix at Monaco. <laughs> That's fair. I, I, I get him. I understand that. Yeah, Look, yeah. Who among us wouldn't? Who among us wouldn't? But yeah, like I mean, it was it, it's it's a fun movie. What did you? What are your feelings to it? Because this is a this is a, not your first time watching this film. I mean, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, like Adam Sandler's actually really picked it up like this is so fun i was surprised that it did badly because mm -hmm. i thought like you know it's a silly movie yeah yeah but it's so entertaining like it's fun to watch the whole way through they didn't have any like really gratuitous mm -hmm. gross scenes i think maybe the grossest bits were some jokes that adam sandler insisted on throwing in there mm -hmm. but even those weren't like that bad um i think they play a very sincere couple who's like yeah you know, trying to make it work. And he's like, just doesn't want to keep disappointing his wife because he loves her so much. <laughs> and he fucks <laughs> that up. And, you know, it's just like, it's really, it's really nice. Yeah, I think when you divor divorce uh, Adam Sandler from the situation and like the writing, it actually becomes pretty good when he's involved still. Like, like you mm. said, like, you know, there were like the cringiest parts were with his jokes and things and like mm. him being like a bad husband and things. And I guess like, it's not excusable in no way is it excusable but that's very yeah. much how his generation thinks of marriage and things and like yeah. the husband's always a screw up and the wife is always complaining when actually she's just wanting what was promised to her as like a proper relationship yeah but, you and know, i kind of like that yeah. at the end they realize that they're like partners again you know mm, yeah and it was nice it's nice to see like that sort of an actual character arc for mm. an adam sandler character <laughs> yeah which is which is really weird. Um, what's her name? The 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 female um, actress, the the actual actress in oh the, Gemma the Arterton. Yeah, Gemma Arterton. She was a porn star in this, right? Like from the names of no. the titles of I those think she movies, was just right? A, I think she was an actress who um, maybe was in more exploitative films. <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure like boobs was in one of the titles that she was in, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> she was incredible i love her oh, yeah. so much she was so funny she's a brilliant actress and like i've loved yeah. everything that we've we've seen her in and and she is mm. she is absolutely brilliant i think mean, i think the whole cast across the board like that with all the rich scene, people or like that quote-unquote yes. sex scene that she did with the maharaja where she has to be like so oh grace funny. grace your skin it's so beautiful <laughs> that is such a great power move I love that <laughs> so much. Just saying all the things you want people to say to you. <laughs> hey, if they're not going to say it to you, just do yeah, it yourself. You know what? what a win. <laughs> Get yourself there. Yeah. And and like I love his like sudden switch when he when he when he prematurely finishes and he's just like maybe we should talk for a bit. <laughs> And then the whole time it's cutting to like Jennifer Addison and Adam Sandler under the bed, just like yeah. trying not to laugh. Yeah. Perfect. It was, it was Perfect. a brilliant scene. It I was... think what makes this movie fun is like, because like, you know, Jen and Adam mm. are such like everyman characters, mm. Mm. you can like really put yourself in the in their shoes yeah, and definitely. sort of experience like how ridiculous this whole mystery is from their perspective mm. and it makes it so much more like immersive yeah and fun yeah um because it very much was like oh it's these two average people caught up in this investigation <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and and yeah it's it just normalizes the situation it's sort of like if you took anyone watching knives out and put them in the actual movie yeah. it's the kind of the exact same thing exactly um also, big up to, to John Carney 
in this. We yeah. love, we love some South African actor. Ah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, he was fun in this. You know, very different from his role in like Black Panther. Yeah. <laughs> A little less serious. <laughs> just just a tiny, wee, wee, wee bit less serious. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I've got very little bad to say about this movie. How about yeah. you? Me too. It's genuinely just like a bucket of laughs. It's a great, like, uh, take your brain out and have mm-hmm. a, like, a, a tired post-Sunday lunch mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you Definitely. don't have to pay that much attention. You can just sit, hold your food, baby. Mm-hmm. And enjoy yeah no absolutely and i mean like our listeners will know how much we despise adam sandler movies like it is always on our our least favorite of all movies ever yeah. and yet i would i i mean i i, I really enjoyed this film yeah. like, this is a real turnaround and i have to assume it's maybe adam sandler didn't have as much creative mm-hmm. license as he's usually given in his other movies and maybe there was like a woman or two in the writer's room? <laughs> we can all dream. <laughs> These are the dreams we wish. Or maybe, and just this is a very far, far, like, left field shot. Maybe he's growing as a person. And maybe he's no, realizing that homophobic ridiculous. jokes are just not cool. Yeah, people aren't having a good time anymore. Yeah. So so maybe he's just like, okay, yeah, maybe I should. I mean, it at least down. still follows his trend of picking projects exclusively so he can go on vacation to beautiful places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to be at the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm sorry, it's the <laughs> only way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam, we could just green screen this. No, no, I don't no. think we can. No. I don't think we could capture the, <laughs> the, the, the power of these machines. <laughs> <laughs> genius he's worked the system well i'm 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 impressed do you know like because obviously rudy's looked into it like it is so expensive to attend the monaco grand prix oh really is it i, I can imagine it would i mean be, the tickets like... alone to like you know be in mm-hmm. a viewing area and stuff but on top of like accommodation is mm-hmm. insane because like, monaco is insane because the Mon- whole it's city monaco is booked yeah. out yeah it's monaco flights are insane everything is just like <laughs> so expensive it's it's a dream i think it's like somewhere on my bucket list somewhere sometime when we when we get this podcast absolutely massive yeah. you can you can <laughs> use the podcast ma- money and and take ready to to, mm. to monaco I think that's the way we can Maybe do a we show should in just Monaco. Get sponsored. Maybe we should just get sponsored by Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's always an option. I mean, we can, I don't mind commentating on, on Formula One. I think would be great. Um, be I've watched I've watched that Netflix series about Formula One, so I'm pretty clued in to all yeah. the drama, and I've been following it this um, season. Good, nice one. <laughs> mm, so i'm and, pretty yeah. clued in and you, you and i both drive so we know how cars work so <laughs> manual cars too oh well, there you go i think our biggest thing would probably be like the the pit changes that's all we would care about just like look at those men the work speed. look it's at how so good that fast. is it, it blows is my insane. mind every time like how do they do it it's it's bonkers i love it <laughs> it's the best it is the best part of formula one in my opinion don't care about the okay, crashes no. don't care about who wins i want to see the pit changes no, i'm all in it for the drama now oh really nice and also like all formula one drivers are a solid eight or higher surprisingly right it's very strange mm-hmm. they're all very i think well they're driving. all pretty because it's I I've talked to Rudy about this. <laughs> like they're all a solid eight or higher, but they're all like pretty like it's an expensive sport to get uh, into. Right. Okay. Um. So it's not like they come from rough backgrounds, and I think they can afford to like you know have that extra skin care done. Yeah. And, yeah. Um. Eyebrows threaded and whatnot. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But Those it is braces. like you can just look at very pretty people for you know hour and a half however long the, mm. the 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 races are yeah mm. nice okay so let's move on uh seen that could yeah. have saved it i don't think there is one i really enjoyed this whole movie i was i mean i would have liked to see more john connie <clears throat> i would have liked to see oh, more yeah. of all of the characters just because they were so great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i i think it would have been really fun to see more of 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 sergey as well the mm. the, the, the russian bodyguard because he was just so funny and like 
such yeah, a great little cuddly great. teddy bear. Yeah, he was very cool. See, see, for me, I think the ending with like Grace and the non English speaking person, like their connection was just like really kind of loosely tied together in the end. Like, why wouldn't Grace be like, well, I was working with this guy? Like, why was she like very quiet about that when she got caught? It was very strange yeah. to me. And that kind of was like, okay, well, I mean, you almost made it. We, we fell down right at the last hurdle, but I mean, I, I guess I can excuse it. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so would you watch it again? Yeah. I think if, like, you need a comedy movie to pull out of your back pocket, like, throw on if your parents are visiting or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, this is a fun for the whole family mm -hmm. kind of movie. Um, yeah. Again, post Sunday lunch, that is going to be this movie's, like, it's a peak sweet time. Spot. Yeah. Is mm. that niche? Yeah, no, I completely, yeah, no, I completely agree, and I would definitely watch this again, which is strange because it's Adam Sandler. Um, mm -hmm. But I would absolutely watch this again. Um, like you said, perfect to watch with the parents. Like if you're really finding it really difficult, I don't know how you are with your parents, but I find it very difficult to find something that we could all watch together. Like <laughs> I think that's going to be hell for me when I die. Is just my parents sitting there going, "What should we watch? To what 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 should we watch?" Tonight? <laughs> endlessly scrolling through netflix trying to find something oh really that will be my eternity yeah <laughs> are, are your parents not the same are your parents very no calm? well my mom doesn't really like watching movies um so she like hangs out and goes to read or whatever and then i usually watch with my dad and mm -hmm. you know i've said before my dad is like the most easy to please yeah. person <laughs> yeah. in the world yeah. um so he's happy with anything so really it's up to me i get to pick what we watch oh and so it's horror yeah. always <laughs> and so it was always horror <laughs> yeah no it's very difficult to find something to watch with my parents so this is the perfect film to just be like right cool mm -hmm. default chuck us yeah up. yeah yeah well, Do you want another glass of wine, mother? Yes, let's go. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, thank you for introducing this film into my life because I would have never, so ever watched it if it hadn't been for, yeah. for your suggestion. Oh, nice, yeah. All right, shall we move on to my movie, whatever that could be? Wait, we didn't say the name of your movie. What is oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> the movie is Murder Mystery. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Um, right, so let's move on to my movie then. An unna unnamed movie. I think it will become pretty obvious from my um, synopsis, but I'm going to try and keep it very <laughs> cash. Low key. Low key. Mort Rainey, played by Johnny Depp, is your stereotypical writer. His, he is a self-destructive, tortured soul who is struggling to write his new book. To top it off, he is also in the middle of a messy divorce. About six months ago, Mort caught his wife, Amy, played by Maria Bello, having an affair with this guy, Ted, played by Timothy Hutton. They split up, uh, but Mort Morty still hasn't signed up, uh, signed the divorce papers. The things are definitely not amicable between the couple. One day, while attempting to write, Mort gets a knock on the door. He opens it to find John Shooter, played by John Turturro, a slight man from a small town in Mississippi. He immediately accuses Mort of stealing his story. Mort reacts exactly how you think he would, thinking that this dude is insane and that whatever he wants is complete nonsense. The guy leaves, but gives Mort his manuscript as proof. Reluctantly, Mort re reads it and finds that it is almost identical that to a story that he wrote years ago. Mort is a little frazzled by this because this has happened to him before. The difference being, on that occasion, he did actually steal someone else's story. So now he's thinking, shit, did I just steal another guy's story and completely forget about it? So the next day, he meets up with Shooter to discuss what they're going to do about this. Turns out, Mort wrote this story two years before Shooter, so there, are no, there is no way that he could have stolen it. Obviously, Shooter wants proof, to which Mort says that he will have to track down the magazine in which, he, the, uh, he, in which the story was originally published before it became the novel. Shooter tells him he has three days to get, it, uh, get the magazine or else. Also, he's not allowed to get the cops involved. Mort goes to the cops immediately. He has a friend, Ken, played by Charles S. Dutton, who is sort of like a private security guard who he employs to protect him against Shooter. Even with Ken's help, during those three days, Shooter is able to kill Mort's dog and burn down Amy's house. As the tensions rise, Mort begins to think that Shooter was actually employed by Ted to scare Mort off, uh, from, uh, to scare off Mort from Amy so he will just stay out of their relationship. Shooter ends up killing Mort's friend, Ken, and things just get, keep getting more and more messed up. 
Finally, Mort is able to get a hold of the magazine. As he opens it, he realizes that his story has been physically cut out of the magazine. His sanity starts to unravel until he realizes that he is, in fact, Shooter. <gasps> what? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Many months ago, when Amy and Mort were still together, Mort found this old hat at a garage sale. He put it on and created the character of John Shooter. When Amy cheated on him, it caused Morty to snap and develop. Uh, it caused Mort to snap and develop this whole other personality of John Shooter. Morty. The John <laughs> Morty. I know. Oh jeez, jeez, Amy. Oh, god. Why would you cheat on me? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so he develops this. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's really, I'm so close to the end. We could do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Mott develops, the, he snaps, and he develops this whole other personality of John Shooter, with John being able to do what Mott couldn't kill Amy for cheating on him. As Mott realizes this, Shooter takes over his body and kills Amy and Ted, burying them under a cornfield. The end. The end. The end. Morty. What is your <laughs> cliffhanger? <laughs> uh, my cliffhanger for this one has to be this, uh, which is when uh, Mort and John meet for the first time when he knocks on the door and like all that mm. stuff. Because you know what? John Turturro is a fucking treasure and we do oh, yeah. not appreciate him as an actor enough. He acted the hell out of this. This was spectacular. Do you know what's scary? Like, you look at him in this role, and then you compare it to him in um, The Big Lebowski as, like, the yeah. Turkish guy. And it's just like, wow. Night like, the day. difference yeah. is, is incredible. And, like, he's such a versatile character actor, and I think he's, he's very underappreciated. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. He's so, the sh excuse me, he is the shining light in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it was only because of him that this movie was half decent god damn so yeah talk to me about your thoughts like i want to i want to hear everything from your side of things this movie is exhausting because <laughs> in the first 10 minutes you're like oh it's johnny depp mm -hmm. like it, it's him all along yeah like if it's very obvious because he goes to sleep and he wakes up and oh john's uh, shooter's done something else like yeah. wow i wonder <laughs> how that happened i wonder how he could be in the house when his cop friend just searched the house and no one was there that's wow so you know it's him and then yeah. like the rest of the movie just fucking drags so and much. they make it so obvious and you're like it's him and it's like, oh, this is weird. Why did this happen? It's him. Yeah, yeah. It's very. <laughs> and then very at the obvious. end, you know, when he has like his little realization, you're like, fucking finally. <laughs> and then you find out that shooter is like short for shoot her because he wants to kill his wife. Oh. And then he proceeds to try and kill her with everything but, but a gun. gun. <laughs> it's. Like, what is, like, when he revealed the shoot her at the end, I was like, Jesus, you're, oh. like, we're so much better than this. Is there, I, oh, that, I, I need to get a screenshot of that or something. It is just the most painful, on the nose, yeah. shitty s filmmaking I have seen mm -hmm. in a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, was so mad. <laughs> like, how did she not, like, when, when like, that was revealed to, to Amy during that scene, how did she just not go, like, oh, my God, and just, like, roll her eyes and just, just like... Just fucking kill me. Like, like Jesus I, Christ. Yeah. Just I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to live in a world where this is the level of writing that we have to deal with. <laughs> no wonder you're a failed writer. <laughs> Okay, so I don't. You obviously saw this, but this is based on a Stephen King short. Yes, which is very surprising. Although, as we know, Stephen King cannot write endings. So he also does a lot of swings and misses. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's a prolific writer. He can't get it right all of the time. Exactly. If you look at sort of the breadth of his work, like it's impossible that all of them are just on fire. Like I it just happens. This one. I mean, he writes writers very well, but I guess that's because he yeah. is one. Like, he always writes yeah. for writers very well. I think also, like, the issue with this movie is, like, you're not really given any reason 
to root for the main mm-hmm. character at all like <laughs> it's made very clear he's just like kind of a loser he mm. feels super sorry for himself because he like stopped putting effort into his marriage and he's mad that his wife like cheated on him <laughs> didn't want to put yeah. up with his alcoholic self-obsessed self anymore and yeah she cheated cheating is wrong but like he's like so mad about it yeah and he's like such a dick to her and she's like phoning him all the time like hey i'm really worried about you yeah uh, i just want to make sure you're okay <laughs> yeah and like it's it's unbelievable and like essentially he's key, he's he's holding her to ransom because yeah. she's found this guy who she really likes and then and then he's like now nah, i'm not going to sign the divorce papers because you know i'm a petulant child yeah so and we're supposed yeah. to like be rooting for this guy or like worried for this guy and it's like mm-hmm. honestly might be the best thing if his wife lets this other man quote unquote um kill him off like why yeah. would you, why should she care yeah that's true exactly like i would have actually loved to see like how shooter how, how this film would have worked out if like like things had just played out normally like if if, <laughs> if like all of like john shooter's threats had come true and he had like killed killed um killed um uh, johnny depp's character killed more yeah. or like they had ended up printing the the story in the correct way and then you know Mort decides to just pay yeah. off John like what then yeah. like <laughs> it's it's i think also it's not great because it's not a very believable mental breakdown either like no. John's changing motives are so bizarre cuz no. at first it's like oh i want you to acknowledge you stole it and then oh i want you to prove that you wrote it oh, I, I don't care. I just want you to change the ending. Oh, I'm just mad now and I'm going to murder everyone. Like, so the whole time you're just like, wait, so how is this an extension of Johnny Depp again? Like, he just yeah. wants to kill his wife. Like, why this other bullshit? Yeah. Like, what is the relevance or significance of the story? I n- understand the story is like also how the movie ends. Like, mm-hmm. but very yeah. clever. Yeah. It's levels. It's layers upon layers upon layers. No, it's it's gauche and just ridiculous. And as I texted you like the other day, what was up with the braces? What did that have to do with anything? But why? Like literally, like towards the end, for those of people who haven't watched it, like Johnny Depp gets braces after he's like killed his wife. He gets braces and he goes into the like the the town shop and he says to like this really cute um postal working lady yeah. and he's just like you see i got braces i i needed to straighten some things out and it's just like did, is that just for the line is it because his wife kicked him in the face while she was fighting him off maybe but then again also you wouldn't be able to eat corn with braces that's the worst oh, food no, to eat I, with I braces. would not recommend no 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 you can't eat corn with braces that's like him just mm-hmm. chewing gum like an insane person. And then the police are like, oh, we'll prove you did it. We just got to find those bodies. And it's like, really? That's the only way that you can prove <laughs> he did it? <laughs> Besides, like, motive, the fact that the wife made it clear she was headed to his house. <laughs> the fact that, like, what, like, how useless are the police? You don't always need a body <laughs> to make a case. <laughs> Well, don't you know that at that aspect of the law, without a body, it's never murder. And surely they could have gotten a search warrant and searched the suspiciously replanted garden? Mm, mm. That's not, like, (laughs) one and one don't make two, apparently, in this universe. Plus, also, like, their cars have to be missing. Like, if there's ever a drought, like, if there's a drought that summer in, like, the quarry, like, they're gonna find those cars and those dead bodies. Like, what like just go diving like you could probably track the marks and everything like yeah you know a top detective his buddy ken has gone missing people are going to start asking questions and you're just like oh if only we had the damn bodies the the whole movie is just so baffling and infuriating and Mm -hmm. drags on for so long like they're like oh we're laying these clues for the audience it's like i know i know i figured it out i know can we just scooch this right along it's ridiculous. And then, like, he starts talking to himself at the end, like, the, the second Johnny Depp comes on, and I'm like, oh, right, okay. So, now we have two imaginary people, and one of them is... Uh, yeah. No. It's... Uh, Johnny Depp doing Johnny Depp things, I guess. Like... 
can we retire him? Can he be retired? Please. <laughs> it's very it's, yeah. It's finished now. <laughs> We're done with him. Um, I mean, what did you like about this movie? If there was anything in particular, I liked the dog until it got killed for no reason. Yeah, people like killing dogs, and it's not right. I liked the dog. Um, the wife was actually a really interesting character, mm-hmm. and I really liked her. Yeah. Um, and that's why, like, when she dies, you're like, oh, there goes, like, the only person in this whole movie <laughs> I gave a shit about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if she had survived, it would have been a much better movie. Like, and then, I mean, I guess I just like the scenes with her in because Mm -hmm. then like you could actually see something about Mort's character and what she maybe saw in him Mm. um I liked the scene with the lawyer where they're like trying to talk to the lawyer and like it's this tense moment because the other man is there and Mm. he's like oh you need to leave and like that was that was like really tense and interestingly Mm -hmm. acted the rest you're just like yeah it goes on for so long right (laughs) you're talking to Shooter again excellent fantastic like that's although like to be fair like any scene with Shooter is great yeah. because he's just like a very intense actor. Um, I really like, I I think I enjoyed the little bits of him writing because, you know, as as you and I are writers, we, we, we understand the struggle really oh, well. Man. And that bit in the beginning where he's like writing and then he's like, it's all crap. I hate all of it. It's all rubbish. Yeah. And you know what we do with bad writing? We delete it. And then he deletes it and it's just a blank document again. And I was like, it's in true. There. It hurts, Done that. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just writing like two pages and being like, oh, what am I doing? This yeah. is garbage. All of this is awful. I hate it. Unsalvageable. Hate it. Yeah. It's it's those days where as you're writing it, you're just going, This is so shit. I'll have to fix it <laughs> later, but I can't. This is all awful and I can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh the writing competition I'm doing. I had mm-hmm. like about two rounds where like as I was submitting my uh, entry for the week's prompt or whatever, I was uh-huh. just like, this is so shit. This is so <laughs> shit. I don't have time to fix it. I hate it. Here, take it. <laughs> and you know what? I placed poorly both times. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, you know, and that's what's important yeah. is you know the difference between when you write well and when you write badly and that's what's good and that's what's important because if you mm. didn't and you were like this is amazing Shakespeare has nothing on me then then you have a problem yeah I think that's always like when you start writing at the very beginning you're like oh this is quite good like this is I'm actually quite good at this and then mm. like, <laughs> like down the line you're like oh I was not that good <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, those days when, like, you finish writing something, you're just like, that was shit hot. Holy crap. I am amazing oh at God. this. Oh, my God. And then you go back, Stephen yeah. King, watch out, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming for you, dog. We're I'm about coming. to be best friends. You take a picture of it, you send it to people who you trust, and they're just like, that's amazing. And you're like, I know. I know how good that right? was. <laughs> <laughs> that came out of my brain. <laughs> Oh, uh, writing is an art of great pain and struggle. <laughs> I don't know why we do it. <laughs> so, um, scene that could have saved so, it. Uh, I was about to ask you. Ha, Look, ha, ha. I'm not convinced a single scene could have saved this mm. movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got nothing. Wow um yeah like because you need to just like do a whole movie overhaul i guess overhaul yeah yeah um for me i've got i've got two actually surprisingly and and i mean it goes to the overhaul of what you're saying just like better and more subtle clues that johnny depp was in fact john shooter like it was just very obvious and 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 then even if you didn't see it in the beginning yeah like you get to the end and it's just like he's John Shooter. And like, I guess if you yeah. watch this back, there would be no clues for that. Like, it's just- I think also like, it. to do the, oh, it was him the whole time twist, mm. you have to sort of create like an alter ego that is like um, 
ethically and morally like the exact opposite of the character Mm -hmm. that you're following right like that's why the twists are always so impressive because it's like what but he's everything this guy doesn't stand for and Mm -hmm. like you know they're so different and like how could this man who believes in this also be this man you know Mm -hmm. but like they're not that dissimilar (laughs) no no they're very not dissimilar at all so you're just like oh okay you created a slightly more insufferable version of yourself (laughs) which is saying something because johnny depp is insufferable god yeah in this movie yeah in lots Um, of movies (laughs) and then and then the second scene that i would have loved to see and it's a scene behind the scenes as as you have coined the phrase um Mm. and that is where so so for our people who haven't watched the movie um towards the end when he just like completely lost his damn mind um he scrapes into the wood shooter like a million times and the scene i would love to see is him just plastering over all of that evidence just like taking <laughs> like a day out and just having to like either replace the wood or just oh, like man. Yeah, really buff doing that a, wood right out yeah. <laughs> just doing like a you'd job, have to like, get new tables you'd have to do everything it would be a bloody nightmare you or can't at least shave a that lot down. of tablecloths yeah like it's awful and i would have loved to see the scene where he's just doing that before like the police come around yeah because that's <laughs> evidence <laughs> also just the thinking behind like oh okay so my wife's gonna come in she's not gonna notice it at first but as she goes deeper into the house she will see more instances of the word shooter and then she's gonna go up the stairs where i will be waiting behind the door and she'll see it all she'll walk all the way to the room and then she'll turn around just as i slowly open the door with my hat tipped down real cool like it's so pathetic <laughs> it's ridiculous and can you imagine like how long he was just waiting there for amy to arrive just like behind the door like just like waiting and just like oh she's gonna come and it's gonna be brilliant oh this is gonna blow her fucking mind <laughs> <laughs> i am getting a little bit hungry though <laughs> i need to be so bad <laughs> Would you watch it again? <laughs> God, no. I didn't even want to watch it the second time. No. What, you've seen this before? I've seen it before, but like ages and ages ago, you Good know? Lord. Like, I was, I, it was like, as it just came out, my crush mm-hmm. on Johnny Depp was strong. Fair. Um, it's not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you've matured. Quite the opposite. <laughs> right okay so yeah and you? No, would you no. watch it again no no not even a little bit i mean mm. if i want to see something with steve uh, that written by stephen king there are so many better things oh yeah like that i would watch even it chapter two which like let's be honest wasn't that great like i would watch that again like i think the horror elements of it chapter two were really good it mm. was just like um plot wise and stuff it fell off yeah. the edge yeah. a bit yeah anyway. um but yeah, like, there's no way I'm watching this ever again. Like, never, ever, 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 ever mm-hmm. again will I watch mm-hmm. this movie. And for those of you who are wondering what movie we were talking about, it is Secret Window. What? What? <laughs> Which is also the name of the book that John Shooter stole. <gasps> it all comes together. Yes. In the way that you just don't want it to. In the most painfully obvious way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it, Simone. We have finished Murder Mystery Week. What a surprisingly weird week. The week that yeah. Adam Sandler came on top. Yeah. Never happened before. Very strange. Life's full of surprises. <laughs> or as we say, mysteries. Ooh. Ooh. So how are you? How has your week been? And what is your optimistic thing? I am good. Um, my week's also been good. Today was just a nice day. I mm-hmm. it was beautiful weather. I ran a chill 10k. Nice. I got back. Rudy was like, "Oh, shall we go for a drive?" So we went for a drive because Cape Town's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, like all the bubbles. All the bubbles now. Just <laughs> making their way back. Um, <laughs> We stopped for milkshakes at like my favorite spot to get milkshakes. It was just like a really lovely day. And I'm making focaccia for dinner. We're gonna have oh, some, nice. some cheese and nibbles. Oh, that's so yeah. special. 
Yeah. And how's, how, how are you? How's your day going? What's your yeah. optimistic thing? Yeah, no, my, my week's been good. Today's been really nice. What did I do? Yeah, my mom and I went like shopping and stuff. And then we had like lunch together. So it was really nice because um, my dad's gone to France for, for, for business. So um, yeah, he works for a French company now. So um, he's gone to France. So we just like had the day together, which was really nice. I got some um, new shoes because I needed shoes and stuff. And um, yeah, I'm also getting the bubbles. It's sympathy bubbles. Um, mm. And yeah, so so it's been a really nice chill weekend. Um, I will say that my optimistic thing for the week is uh, that it is so nice and warm here, like mm. uncomfortably warm. And you know what? It's nice. such a nice change from the usual UK weather. And like, I love <laughs> summer here when it you gotta comes enjoy around. it while it lasts. Exactly. So you know, it was thirty six degrees the other day, and it was just like the perfect day to just sit out in the sun. And that's what I did. I brought like my textbook out, and I just like studied in the sun, and then just like did did a bunch of my work on my laptop until it like started to overheat because of the sun directly beaming upon it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was absolutely perfect. Got a bit of a tan, and it was lovely. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad. Yeah, yeah. So Simone. I think, you know what, this year has been real tough, and I think uh -huh. we need a bit of a break next week. So I am proposing that we do vacation movies. Oh, is Adam Sandler back in the mix? <laughs> no, surprisingly okay. not in this oh, one. Okay. All right, so I've got a choice of three, so you can choose from hmm. two from the three. Okay. So we've got Couples Retreat, which is a Vince Vaughn film. Yes. That got 10%. Then we've got oh goodness yeah I know and then we've got the heartbreak Ki uh, kid which is a Ben Stiller film um, and that got twenty nine percent and then taking a complete left turn we have Poseidon which got thirty three percent that's the one about the cruise ship right? yeah that's the that, one like, about goes the cruise down. ship yeah yeah and we're doing <laughs> the new disaster. one not the old one yeah um. You know what? Let's do Couples Retreat. I mm -hmm. vaguely recall seeing it at one point, and it was horrifying. So <laughs> that'll yeah, be yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you want to do? Yeah, I'm happy to do Heartbreak Kid. I love this film. I, okay. I think it got a raw deal. It is a terrible film, but I think it got a raw deal getting okay. that lowest score. Couples so I'm very happy. And The Heartbreak Kid. Heartbreak Kid. Yeah. The Great. female actress is uh, uh, Vince Vaughn's female actress opposite side antagonist yeah. person is the same antagonist as in um, Heartbreak Kid. Oh, lovely. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice seeing them in two different vacation films. Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. So what I want to see next week is I want to see you in a nice like Honolulu shirt, like a nice like oh, Hawaiian yeah. shirt. I think I've I'll got a lay same. lying around somewhere. Amazing, yes, I will wear the coconut bra. It'll be great. It'll be really summery and yeah. vacation-y, you know. Cam Dewsville, let's do it. Yeah, hit it up. So thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate it. We hope that this episode wasn't too confusing for you and that you could follow it uh, to its beautiful conclusion. You know, all the all the different strings come together and it goes all the way to the top. Um, <laughs> and if, 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 if you want to write into us of your own conspiracy theories that you believe, mm. um, I personally am a huge fan of the Avril Lavigne has been replaced by a, an a, the identical replica conspiracy theory theory oh, so goodness. bring those in to us let us know what you guys think of them mm. um and uh while you're on the internet why not uh give us a rating give us a review it really really does help and uh where can people write into us and do all that stuff Simone? they can talk to us on facebook or instagram at fresh tomatoes podcast on twitter at fresh tomatoes mp and they can email us at fresh tomatoes podcast at gmail.com Boom, boom, boom. And then guys, as well, we've got the new website up. Yes. Uh, link link will be in the footnotes of this episode as well mm -hmm. as our last couple of episodes, just so you can see those. Um, and yeah, come and chat to us. We'd love to hear from you guys and, and have different discussions and chats with you guys. And that would be really nice. Yeah. And as we say, at the end of every episode, we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Goodbye. Goodbye.